Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here. Did you ever know a person who lied and would tell these long-winded, obviously fake stories that you knew weren't true? Well, sometimes those guys convince people to make movies about those obviously fake stories. And one of those movies is Bloodsport, today on Talking About Tapes. Talk, 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 talking about tapes. Hello, Ryan Hickey. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm doing great. I can't wait to finally <laughs> talk about Bloodsport. So, famously, on the old show Rental Reviews, I uh, was supposed to review Bloodsport, but I, I wasn't able to do that episode. Okay. I left in the beginning of that episode to fight in a very real kumite. I was definitely... <laughs> I definitely didn't go to the Florida Keys to party with my friend or in his wedding. I was fighting in a kumite. I even died in that kumite. <laughs> That's how real it was. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, the fans of that old show always wanted to know what I had to say about blood sport. But unfortunately, <laughs> I wasn't able to tell them because I died in that kumite. But here I am to talk about blood sport. <laughs> Finally, a movie I really, really love that I actually didn't really grow up with. When, when did you fall in love with blood sport? I actually I've grown up with this movie. Uh my mom had a huge thing for Jean-Claude Van Damme, I guess, because... Well, how could you not after this? Ooh, after that booty shot? That's <laughs> the, pretty The nice. muscles from that's, Brussels? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, So we had... I had pretty much, like, access to every Jean-Claude Van Damme movie on VHS, and this was one of my favorites, along with Time Cop and a bunch <laughs> Time of Time Cop's but, a fun one. Time Cop's a fun one. We watched this endlessly. Me and my brother would karate kick each other <laughs> all night long. It was hilarious. Yeah. It's funny that it took me a while to see this because it's partly responsible for things I love, especially Mortal Kombat, mm -hmm. which a lot of people don't know this is, and maybe this should be the title of the movie. <laughs> this was kind of like the origin of Mortal Kombat yeah. was Bloodsport and Enter the Dragon, yeah. obviously. Uh, but I think Mortal Kombat was developed as a Jean-Claude Van Damme game. And Johnny I Cage so, was yeah. one of those characters. And he, a lot of his moves show <laughs> up in this, especially one very famous one. Uh, but yeah, I didn't watch it growing up. I watched other Van Damme mm -hmm. movies, obviously. Uh, but yeah, over the years, I've fallen to like really love this one. Yeah. I really, really love this movie. <laughs> Uh, so much so that I, I want to now go back and check out the sequels. And I'm looking at it right there. Oh. Because I know they star my boy, Daniel Bernhardt. Well, it's uh, funny. I found that at a thrift store, yeah. Bloodsport 2. And I was with a friend and we're like, you know, we should watch this. This looks great. We both love Bloodsport. And uh, I mentioned it to my other friend and they went, well, we, we really want to watch it. So yeah. I was like, okay, well, let's hang out. We'll watch Bloodsport 2. And just glancing at it. It looks like Jean Claude on the cover. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, I didn't even think about it. I'm like, I didn't know there was a Bloodsport too. Yeah, and it had Jean Claude. It was like a three so and a four. Crazy. He's yeah. all of them. Uh, Daniel Bernhardt. And then, so we were watching it, and I think we got 20 minutes in, and we're like, Wait, who the? F <laughs> who is it? Like, who that's not Jean Claude. Is this? I'm so confused, and we're like looking up on IMDb, yeah. like, Oh my god! Did you, uh, did you ever watch Mystery Science Theater? Yeah. Did you ever see uh, Future War? Starring mm -hmm. Daniel Bernhardt. Yeah. They call him Jean-Claude Gostar. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. That's funny. I really like Daniel Bernhardt. And yeah. speaking of Mortal Kombat, I've been re-watching the 90s show Mortal Kombat okay. Conquest. I don't know. I've watched I it seen that so years. many times. Yeah. I've, I've seen that every episode of that show like 10 times. But I don't <laughs> know why. I really like that show. But I really like him. I watched a lot of his, a lot of his movies mm -hmm. growing up. And I remember... When the first John Wick came out, I'm like, that's Daniel Bernhardt. Oh, yeah. He was in the Matrix yeah. movies. He's a good martial artist. It was uh, once we got over the disappointment that he that yeah. John Claude isn't in the sequel, we enjoyed it a lot. But yes. it was like Yes, because he minute. actually like is a fighter. I yeah, don't think John Claude like, was. He's a great martial artist, but I don't yeah. think he was ever like a torment fighter or anything no, like that. No. He just looks um, great. <laughs> but yes, uh my first note for this film is Frank Dukes is a liar. <laughs> my uh, my first note is Bloodsport, the greatest story that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest story ever told by a guy who was lying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, famously, this is uh, billed as like a true event. It's so wild. Uh, and I have a quote here from the writer, co-writer <laughs> Sheldon Leach. Uh, he came up with the idea for the film according to, or Letich, sorry, I messed up his name. I had known Frank Dukes for a number of months before I came up with the idea for Bloodsport. Frank told me a lot of tall tales. We all know that guy. <laughs> uh, most of which turned out to be bullshit. <laughs> but his stories about participating in the so-called Kumite event 
Sounded like a great idea for a movie. I mean, isn't Enter the Dragon about a tournament? Yeah. Yeah. It is a good idea for a movie starring Bruce Lee. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And Bolo Young. Yeah, uh, there was one guy who introduced me. There was one guy he introduced me to (laughs) named Richard Bender who claimed to have actually been at the Kumite (laughs) event and who swore everything Frank told was true. A few years later, this guy had a falling out with Frank and confessed to me that everything he told me about the Kumite was a lie. Frank had coached him in what to say. (laughs) Oh, wow. I'm so shocked. (laughs) Yeah, this is like, I, I... Again, I still haven't seen it, but I heard this is like what the Weird Al movie is. Uh, I haven't like, seen it either. But yeah, the Weird yeah. Al movie, it's like obviously fake <laughs> stories, but that's like part of the charm of it. Yeah. Like he's, he's like killing Pablo Escobar and stuff <laughs> I heard. But this is like the real version. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm making a true story about myself and I did this and I did that. And, and that's real cool, yeah. Frank. It's real cool. <laughs> it was directed by Newton Arnold. Who would, like it's weird? He's only directed a few films, and mm-hmm. they don't list them on IMDb. Even Bloodsport. Yeah. When you I go to his know. page, he has no director thing. He must have hurt somebody's feelings really bad because <laughs> yeah, I like, looked him up. I'm like, is this a alias? What is this? Well, Wikipedia has his actual mm-hmm. director thing, but yeah. IMDb. However, he's like probably one of those famous first assistant directors mm-hmm. I've ever heard. Of. He worked on huge movies like Godfather 2, Blade Runner, The Jerk, Texas Chainsaw yeah. 2, Ninja Turtles, and many more, <laughs> many, many more. But he only directed like three or four films, I yeah, think, and I think this so. is one of them. Definitely the best of them. Yeah, definitely. I looked at the titles for the other two, and I'm like, yeah, this one wins. <laughs> yeah. This one probably wins. I don't think I need to, even need to watch that. Um, but yes, let's get into this classic <laughs> piece of cinema. Uh. The movie starts, okay, uh, the movie starts with a bunch of people training for the Kumite. Yeah, I love the uh, the 80s music. It's like wonderful montage and gauzy, all this fighting. It's just yeah. amazing. It's so good. There's a lot of montages yeah. in this. Uh, and one of the characters we meet is, uh, was it Roy Jackson? Mm-hmm. Uh, who I have is played by... Donald Gibb. Donald Gibb, he- a.k.a. Ogre yeah. from Revenge of the Nerds. And he, I met him at uh, Monster Mania a couple years ago, yeah. and he is one of the nicest guys. I could not stop smiling when I was yeah. talking to him. I'm like, this guy is the coolest. He seems like he'd be a cool dude. He was like really great. Frank Dukes is like fighting in the gym, <laughs> and he's told that the captain wants to talk to him. Or no, he is a captain. His superior wants to talk to him because he knows he's going to Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. And then Frank Dukes fakes a shower and takes off. Now, this is the big question. I, it's later in my notes, but I'm going to bring it up here. Why are they so invested in Frank Dukes? I have, what does he I have do that for- note. I'm like, I don't. What is the point? They're like, well, we spent a lot of money on you. I'm like, what is he, a do cyborg? We, I like- don't, yeah, that's the thing. They're like, we spent a lot of time and money. We yeah. can't afford you to get hurt. I'm like, but why? What does he do that is so important well, that like, you need specifically him? Yeah, like later they're trying to tase him and like they bring. Uh, like an army of yeah. small army of cops to contain him. I'm like, w- you're just gonna beat the hell out of him to drag him back home so no one else beats the hell out of him. It yeah, make it's just any sense. I can't figure out why it's so important I that you, he this, be there. This is this must be a cyborg or like a universal soldier yeah. like prequel <laughs> or something. Like, I, maybe they're, they're gonna be something like we're about to. Uh, launch you on a mission you can't leave to go yeah. to hong kong you're like we've trained you to america know- needs you you're the only yeah. one who can pull up this mission you can o- you're the only one who can fly this ufo <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it's a, it's a ufo <laughs> that's powered by roundhouse kicks and splits <laughs> that's you're the only spins. one <laughs> the centrifugal yes, force the aliens makes their bodies are built with legs that shoot out the side you're the only one who can mimic their controls yeah. oh that would God. be the that bullshit. would be amazing with how many splits? I know that's like his yeah. signature. I forgot how many like yeah. really cool split shots there are. Like, this is insane. I mean, that's for some reason in the eighties and nineties that was like the coolest thing a guy could do was a split without without yeah. getting hurt. <laughs> it's like I don't know how he does it. Like that would hurt me. This man's a he's a superhero. <laughs> if he splits anymore, his balls are gonna hit the ground <laughs> and then it'll die. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he leaves and he visits his uh, old trainer. Uh, Senzu Tanaka, played by Roy Chow, who will be, or has been, I forget the order of episodes, (laughs) he is Lao Che in Temple of Doom, (laughs) which is the best 
Indiana it's... Jones movie, and I will not hear otherwise. Sure. Uh, that's what you want to say? But yeah, I saw him. I'm like, oh, that's Lao Che. <laughs> it's certainly not the worst Indiana Jones movie. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> no, no, the worst Indiana Jones movie hasn't come out yet. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so he's visiting his old master, and then we get the flashback. To that his origin. flashback is outrageous. It's like 15 minutes long, <laughs> gauzy. Yeah, fucking. The acting is so wooden; they might as well be driftwood. It's the, ridiculous. The ADR for young Jean Claude. <laughs> oh, so awful. Master. If you expect me to be punching bad, you can't forget about our deal. Uh, like it, it's clearly. I don't think it's Jean Claude. <laughs> I think it's like a younger person trying to do his yeah. accent and also do the voice of a young child. And it's just not, it's definitely not the actor. I don't, yeah. I refuse to believe it's the actor, but it's like, Oh, I was not going to take it. <laughs> I'm just American boy. <laughs> I never realized like when I was watching this now, I'm like the, the acting so wooden, like everyone's like, it's just something's like off. And then I realized watching it again for this. Mm. I'm like, half the people in this movie are dubbed. Yeah. And I'm like, I never noticed as a kid. The, I didn't even know no, dubbing was a the thing. The military guy in the beginning was dubbed. Uh -huh. He was like very specifically oh, dubbed. It's so wild. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we get this whole uh, backstory, you know, where um, Tanaka, Tanaka realizes that he could be a fighter because he cuts the brim of his hat off and he doesn't flinch. <laughs> and he was just like, he doesn't want to train him to fight. Really, he wants him to help his son become a better fighter. He just wants a like a basically a punching bag yes. for his son. <laughs> but he has to ask the parents' permission. Obviously. Yeah, of course. He's very he's very respectful. Uh, but yeah, he wants to train him in martial sciences. Martial science. Because I have a degree in martial science. Oh, you do. <laughs> of course. That's what I. I you know, I uh, that was my. Um, I don't even have a job. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be like. <laughs> That wasn't my major. That was my yeah. minor. And I'm just like, I'm like, I didn't even graduate. I'm the, the, everyone's going to poke holes in that story. Yeah, I was God forbid go for I my... tell a fake story yeah. in the blood sport review. That would just ruin your <laughs> reputation. I, I wouldn't suggest. It. Yeah, I would never lie. I mean, I, I always tell the truth. Like earlier when I said I died in that kumite. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, uh, he tells about martial science. And they're like, what is martial science? And I was watching it today. And it's the first time I asked myself, and I went, yeah, what is martial science? I'm like, I forget this part. What is it? And he's like, you use science to help grow vines. I use science to help me hatch fish. Martial science makes people fight better. I'm like, it made no sense whatsoever. Can I, I was like, hey, I do, I do karate. I know maybe it's not karate, right. but for these parents, like, I do karate lessons. Uh huh. I need the parents' permission. There you go. Make your son strong. Yeah, he, he's a good fighter. Could be yeah. very nice. Martial um, science. <laughs> I've never heard martial <laughs> science. <sighs> was that a Frank Dukes thing? Like, maybe, yeah, I learned like martial what it science. Is. I just keep picturing the writer going like, yeah, that's cool, Frank. That's yeah. cool. What else did you do, Frank? Martial sciences. Okay. Oh, you, oh, you yeah. didn't flinch when your hat got cut? Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he has a rivalry with Shingo, but then they become friends. <laughs> they do. They do, because he saved them from some bullies. That The whole the whole flashback is shot like some like terrible TV movie. Yeah. It's so bad. The acting's so bad. And like yeah. the cutting, they should have cut like so much sooner, but there's so many shots of them awkwardly <laughs> standing there, putting their arm around each other. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, ooh. And the whole thing is like that. It was like so dynamic to watch, but mm. so bad. <laughs> it, was, uh, uh, it was crazy. Well, by the way, this is now uh, Mr. Tanaka. He, he becomes the most tragic character I've ever heard of because <laughs> like his son Shingo dies. It's like, oh. He died early. I don't think they ever say what they, from. I don't think so, yeah. Think he died early, and he's, Tanaka's like, I can't train anyone. It's like, oh, that's a bummer. He's like, by the way, I had another family, and they all got nuked in Hiroshima. And I was like, holy shit! <laughs> whoa. I'm like, all right, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so you had a whole separate family. They got nuked while you were fighting in the war. And now, and then you build a new family, and then your son dies tragically. I'm like, yeah, that would fuck me up too, buddy. <laughs> I didn't remember that at all. I was yeah. like, Whew, okay, I'm gonna need a moment. This is 
And and what Frank should do is like, yeah, buddy. Uh, like, you know what? Let's not jump to anything. How about you just take some time? So Frank's like, you got to train me instead. Yeah. It's like, buddy, buddy. If someone told me, like, <laughs> if you came in right now, you're like, hey, Tony, I can't review this movie. I'm like, what happened? You're like, oh, well, my family was nuked years ago. And then my second family... I don't know. They they fell into a wood chipper. They all tripped at the same time into a wood chipper. I'd be like, yeah, man, uh, take take a break. We don't have to talk about blood sport today. And then a month later, I'd be like, hey, you get to talk about blood sport. Yeah, like, take a moment, spend some time with your yeah. family. I can't believe they all tripped into the wood chipper. How big was the wood? Anyway, I don't. Know. It was like, a king size wood chipper. It was a king size. <laughs> it was the thing they threw Michael Myers in the yeah. new movie. They all oh. just tripped into. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> so yeah, he's like, fine, I will trade you, I guess. It's like, dude, you could take a week off, buddy. You yeah. take, don't you have fish to hatch? Why don't you focus on that for a bit? <laughs> oh, I have it here. Uh, Tanaka is gatekeeping martial sciences from him. He's like, no, you are not Japanese. Yeah. It's like, man, come on. <laughs> uh, so rope torture. It was part of the training. There's some really good pain acting in this movie. The, yeah. the rest of the acting's wooden. Anyone talking to each other is terribly yeah. wooden. But the pain acting... Like, <laughs> but I guess that's supposed to be like the origin of his splits. I guess like, so. Like the rope, it hurts so much, but I guess it popped his bones into certain places <laughs> and now he can split like a pro. That like, was I, feel like wild got, I feel like stuff. that's something you got to practice over time. Yeah. Like, I don't think you can just do that right away. <laughs> yeah, they needed, like, a montage of him doing the split yeah. thing. That is the most painful-looking contraption. Yeah, it's, it's just insane. ropes everywhere. It's like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> like, you could just do a split on the ground. You yeah, don't have to... <laughs> I don't think you... I don't think you need that. I don't think he needs to be suspended. You could probably have ropes pulling his legs. Yeah. I don't think they need to be suspended. I was wondering how like how they did that physically. Like, yeah. Because it didn't look like he was suspended in any way. And I'm like, No, I think they tied him up it, with they the ropes. Might literally just like <laughs> But he, luckily they got an actor who can do a yeah. split. So it wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> yeah, with how jacked he was, I'm like, his core muscles, he probably could just like <laughs> it was just wild. He was jacked. Probably on a lot of coke. I know for sure because he admitted on the Street Fighter yeah. movie. He confessed like in some article years ago. He's like, I was on like ten thousand dollars worth of cocaine every week. I'm like, that's a that's, that's a, a lot, lot of buddy. Cocaine. And also, he's probably on a ton of steroids. So. Probably. God, I love I love when actors pretend they don't use steroids. Like, who the fuck are you fooling? Who cares? It's not like you're in an actual competition. Yeah, that's the only like, like I know they give shit to wrestlers, and I know. People say it can fuck up your brain chemistry, but I think that's even still debated. I think it's more yeah, taking blows to the head is the problem with Probably. that. Probably. But CTE is a terrible, terrible thing. No, it is. It is. It is. Um, but I know people were trying to equate that to steroids, but mm. I think there's, I think the jury's still out. I on think that it's just people who use steroids a lot do high impact sports. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think there's a lot of factors yeah. into it. But it's just, yeah, when actors pretend like they don't do it, it's like, yeah, of, of course you do, you idiot. Like, what yeah. are you talking about? Of course you do. Like, we're all not falling. Like, you like The Rock, it's like, oh, yeah, I know yeah. he's in the gym every day, but come on. Are you kidding me? And like, I love when uh, there's certain actors who get big all of a sudden. You're like, you didn't get that big yeah. and that ripped in like two months yeah. without the use of something. Yeah. Some magic you ever beans seen, or like, something. Have you ever seen, like, Bodybuilder? Like, I know mm -hmm. people bodybuild, like... They get super jacked for that competition. Yeah. And then they kind of like even back, like, like they're still in really great shape, mm -hmm. but you can only hold that for like so long. God, it's just, it's just so funny. Did you hear about the, we'll get back to the movie in a second, but now <laughs> that we're talking about steroids, have you heard of the liver King? Did you hear that whole fiasco? No. It's this guy who was like teaching you how to be like, like a true man. And he, oh, he ate geez. raw livers because the nutrients from raw livers oh, had him. Like, really jacked and stuff. And you'll never believe it. You'll never believe it. He was spending thousands of dollars on steroids. No way. And all his people are like, I've been eating raw livers. The king to of look livers? like the liver king. And it turns out he's juicing. It's like, oh. who would have ever predicted I would that? never know. That was, like, my favorite. Is like, for some reason, I don't know what's happening with men in America right now. But they're falling for a <laughs> lot of obvious bullshit. Uh, but that was one of them. Yeah. Like, the internet was having so much fun. They're like, yes, can you believe this guy was juicing? It's like, yeah. If you if you had a lineup of people and said, which one's juicing? I'm like, well, obviously that guy. <laughs> oh, uh, but man. I need to get this shape. So if you can tell me how to get any of that stuff. Juicing. <laughs> oh, okay. 
Like prune juice, right? Yeah. I assume that's what it is. Yeah. Anyway, um, Frank promises to honor Tanaka at the Kumite. Because yeah. I want to fight for your honor. Oh. We're going we're gonna to do this. I'm going to win this for you. And he's like, okay, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, they go to Hong Kong. And he meets, he meets Ray. Who, uh, who can't wait to get more scars on his face, as he says in the beginning. <laughs> but he's trying to be intimidating. And, of course, he's decked out. He's the poster boy for Harley Davidson. <laughs> Never once on a motorcycle. But he's the poster boy yeah. for Harley Davidson. <laughs> uh, yeah, and they play Karate Master together. It's amazing. <laughs> like, that is uh, that is where true friendships yes. start. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's actually, cause what is this? Is this 1988? Yeah, 88. Yeah, I guess yeah. this is still around that time where like, I mean, video games weren't new, but they were becoming more popular. So mm -hmm. that probably would have been cool to be like, oh shit, they're playing Karate Master. It's very Master. novel and like, ooh, yeah. this is trendy and fun. Yeah, it, it was like a hip thing back <laughs> yeah. then. And yeah, Frank Duke says, aren't you a little old for video games? <laughs> and everyone on this show knows that I always say video games are for children. Absolutely. And I only play them to make sure they're safe for kids. And <laughs> Ryan, oh, this might surprise you. A lot of these are not good for kids. They're not. I've played a handful of them for the same reason. Yeah. I'm always playing them. I'm like, oh, limbs are getting, kids aren't going to like this. A shotgun to the face? This isn't acceptable Little for children. Little Tim and Sally aren't going to like that. <laughs> I'm very upset. I'm an uncle now, so I got to make sure of my, my twin nieces. Yeah. They grow up in a world with safe video games, so I'm constantly <laughs> writing to my congressman. I'm like, get these games out of here. They're, they're so mean. <laughs> so we also meet Janice. Janice Kent. Yes. Who plays her again? Uh, you have her in your notes? Leah Aries. What else is she in? I don't know. I wanted to look her up, and I totally forgot to I'm do gonna it. I'm going to look her up now. She looked very familiar. Um, she was one of those... Uh, I'm like, she's very pretty, very nice lady, yeah. but I did not believe that she was a reporter at all, especially <laughs> later when she's like, I, I just want to do the best I can. I'm like, you are doing a terrible job. By the way, I feel, I feel like she's more of like... I don't know, this seems more like a journalist than a reporter. Yeah. Reporter kind of like reports on what's going on, right? And then journalists, well, these days they just make things up. But they used to actually like <laughs> investigate stuff. Uh, she was in The Burning. That's how okay. I remember her. That's how okay. I remember her. What that makes sense. Yeah. Let me, let me I see. I love The Burning so much. So that I makes sense why I recognize her. Yeah, I have yeah. the internet in the store. I know I know you're wondering why all, am I not using this computer? All I have is the paper. <laughs> you're probably wondering why am I not using this computer? That's because, spoiler... It's not real. <laughs> I don't think this computer's turned on since no 19. way. This the last time this computer on was probably when Bloodsport was in the <laughs> Uh let me, let me I'm looking her up right now. Uh The Burning. She was in she was in all that jazz. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to see what else. Uh oh, she's on an episode of Freddy's Nightmares. I've watched that Ooh. entire series recently. I have it, I haven't watched it. But I have a massive, uh, a massive movie collection, so I have to really, uh, yeah, finish organizing before I decide what I'm going to watch next. Oh yeah, no, Freddy's Nightmares is on Tubi right now. Is it? Oh, yeah, right. that saves me. Time. Yeah, no, I've been telling yeah. people I'm like it's finally like because I always heard about it. I was mm. never able to watch it because like yeah. you had to hunt down a DVD set if you could find it. Yeah, and who knows what the quality is? <laughs> That's not the best quality, but that show is a lot of fun. There's so many like actors, like Brad Pitt's in it okay. before he was big. Uh, the girl from SVU is in it before she was big. Uh, her last credit is an episode of Sliders in 1998. Really? Yes. Uh, hmm. And then I think she... I want to rewatch Sliders. That show was so Sliders good. Sliders came it so up in much. our Raiders of the Lost Ark episode because of John Reese okay, davies yeah. I'm like, yeah, I should watch Sliders again at some point. I know he said it was the writing was terrible and he hated it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I always liked it. I enjoyed it in the 90s. I don't know how it holds up now, but Carrie War, come on. Aye, aye, aye. Come on. <laughs> All right, so she's trying to interview people about the Kumite, and no one wants to talk to her about it. They're like, hey, lady, this is like a secret. Yeah. They're, they're, they should be like, hey, the first rule of Kumite is we don't talk about Kumite. <laughs> and the second rule of Kumite. <laughs> so, yes, uh, while this is happening, the CIA visits the Tanakas. And who's one of the CIA agents? Oh, Forrest Whitaker. Baby Forrest oh. Whitaker. Like, very young. His eye didn't get droopy yet. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker. Mr. Tanaka. Mrs. Tanaka. And I remember watching this years back, like for the first time, like far as Whitaker's in this movie. <laughs> like I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, he's great in this. He's like, <laughs> the funny thing is he's supposed to be this young rookie CIA mm. agent, but he's just towering over the white guy. He's huge. <laughs> like, I feel like this part was, I mean, the age is probably right, but I'm like, yeah. how I pictured this in my head, I feel like a smaller person. <laughs> 
They should have got like a thin meek guy. Be like, yeah, oh, well, come on, guys, you come back with us. The you dude, know. the dude who's doing all the monkey moves later uh-huh. on, he's who I would picture. Yeah. Not doing the monkey moves, but he's who I would picture yeah. visually as the CIA guy. <laughs> I picture Forrest Whitaker in the ring beating uh-huh. the shit out of dudes. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Mr. Lin uh, is there to help uh, assist what you call it, um, Frank Dukes yeah. and Roy. Uh, yeah, put ter- up your dukes. Yes. The ducks? No, dukes. <laughs> uh, he is played by Ken Siu, who was another assistant director. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, what else is he in? I'm like, oh, he doesn't act in much. He's an assistant director. Yeah. He's probably friends with the director, who was a famous assistant director. <laughs> I was like, hey, buddy, you want to be in the movie? Yeah. Uh, okay, USA. <laughs> okay, USA. I I, forgot, I shouldn't be laughing at this guy, but like even when I was a kid, I would laugh hysterically. Yeah. Okay, USA. I think you're supposed to laugh. I think you're supposed to. But I'm like, I just I, I just feel wrong doing it now. <laughs> I'm like, this, nah, it's great. It's hilarious. Everyone should go. Okay, USA. I'm gonna just start doing it now. <laughs> um. So they enter the the arena. Well, I was gonna even the. Uh, okay. The weird hallway that yeah. they have to go down. It reminded me, maybe just the way it was shot, it reminded me of Terminator in the, uh, oh, the flashback, yeah. flash forward, whatever. In the future. When yeah. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like very cool. Yeah. The, oh, what the hell? We're filming. <laughs> uh, security. Later. later. Security. <laughs> I got to get an on-air sign. <laughs> Sorry about that. See, the thing with the news story is, is that your mom could just walk in behind the scenes at any time. <laughs> it's true. But it the, it's, it is very, like, there are so many really good shots in this. Like, it, it is beautifully shot. Yeah. Oh, it's a great looking and, movie. Like, th- that shot alone, I'm like, this really reminds me of Terminator. Like, it, it's very cool and creepy. And there's a baby crying. And it's very weird. Yeah. yeah the baby crying. That does remind me of Terminator yeah. with all the kids. Um, but, yeah. So, they enter the arena. And they have to prove themselves to the Black <laughs> Dragon. And I'm like, oh, that's the organization of Mortal Kombat that Kano belongs yeah. to, who Daniel Bernhard had to fight their ancestors in an episode of Mortal Kombat Conquest. <laughs> he had to fight Jola from the Black Dragon. Good to know. <laughs> Thank God that episode is, that was the last episode I watched recently. So it's fresh <laughs> in my head. <laughs> um, I'm like, so the guys make a Mortal Kombat. They're like, we like that name, Black Dragon. We're using that for Kano because he will be Chinese only in the first game. Yeah. And then I think a cockney British guy played him, and then we all thought he was Australian, and then we ended up being Australian. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they have to tell him he has to prove the dim mock. Yeah. And what what is the dim mock? The dim mock is what I start my day. Every day I set up a bunch of bricks, and I choose which one I'm going to... Yep, the third one down. <laughs> And I explode that brick, just that one specifically. Yes. You know. He gets lucky because he's like, what brick? And the top one. He's like, whew. Yeah. And then they go, no, the bottom one. So, yeah, he like he <laughs> hits it. And I guess. I think it's like the fourth or fifth one down. He, yeah, just, yeah. He yeah. hits it so hard that it sends shockwaves that will only explode the bottom. Uh-huh. It doesn't make. Again, Frank Dukes probably be like, and then guess what else I did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's real. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? The Only the bottom one broke? I'm like, oh, yeah. wow. You, you broke a brick. No, no, not the top one. The bottom one. Yeah, that's how like, like awesome. Like, could you do it now? No. No, no. I have to warm up. It's a whole thing. No, I'm not really supposed to show yeah. off. Like, it's a secret n- <laughs> ninjutsu secret. This is where like the, uh, <clears throat> the eyeball acting like really starts. Yeah. Everyone's like, Ugh, uh. well, freaking uh, Chung Li yeah. is the, the the lord of the eyeball. He's acting. the greatest. I love he him. He is so, so much. good in this. So yeah, the CIA they show up in Hong Kong. <laughs> They're like, "Where's Frank Dukes?" And no one wants to really help them. No. Some Middle Eastern guys are being disrespectful to women <laughs> at the bar. Uh, they're giving Janice a hard time. <laughs> Hussein, I think, is yeah. like, come back to my room. She's like, no, I'm all right. I'm like, I'm good. Aww. I'm doing that. Uh, and Frank and Ray want to defend her, but they can't fight or they'll get kicked out of the yeah. kumite. <laughs> so he tricks him with a coin trick. He's like, I bet you I can pull that coin out of your hand. And then it's so he ridiculous. does a move and they're like, he's like, hi, I still have the coin. But it's like, oh, it's a different coin. <laughs> so I technically win. It's like, what the fuck? What is going on here? I, I hope that's a story that that the real Frank Dukes tried to pass off on people. Oh, I was so fast. Yeah. Like, everything in this seems like he was telling somebody and they weren't impressed enough. So he was like, no, 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 I didn't just yeah. grab the coin from his hand. No, no, is that what I said? No, I, I meant that I took the coin from his hand, replaced it with another coin. <laughs> That's how fast I am. I Are lo- you impressed now? I, I love those, those pathological liars. When they, like, they, 
they embellish the story a little too much. Uh-huh. Like, okay, now you lost me here. You would have had me up <laughs> until this point, but you lost me. What is it up with dudes? Like, there were so many dudes in school who did that. I don't know. We all knew the kid who was like, I had sex this weekend. It's like, you're 14. <laughs> Like, and you went, I know you went to, no, I hook up with girls all the time. Like, oh, really? Where are they? They go to a different school. But I, then, uh, I don't know how guys, like, still do that years later. You would think that you would be, like, socially ostracized for it enough yeah. that you would learn a lesson yeah. and stop being a lying asshole. Like, I definitely, you know, every kid tells lies and makes yeah. up stuff. But, like, usually... You I learn, was a werewolf when I was in middle school. Yeah. I, you know, you you learn not to tell lies, or you get caught out and you're yeah. embarrassed, which is probably what happened to me. You get caught <laughs> out and embarrassed, and you're like, "Well, I'm not going to try that again." But there are some people that just keep doing it. And Frank Dukes, he <laughs> somehow he somehow made a career off of it. I don't know how he did it. I had a friend when I was younger, and he was adamant. No, I am a black belt in multiple martial arts. Mm-hmm. I'm not just good at karate. I'm good at lots of things. I have a green mm-hmm. jacket. Mm-hmm. That has a dragon on the back and secret society. I could get you a jacket, but it's it's gonna take me some time. And I was like, mm-hmm. I don't I don't think you're telling me the truth, buddy. No. Like I like you. You don't have to lie. Yeah, that was a weird thing. For, but it was like a year. I was friends with this kid and he no, I got I could get you a green jacket. I was like, Well, why don't you bring yours in so I could see like if I want yeah. it? No, I can't bring it in. It's too special. It's a very special secret green dragon jacket. I'm like, oh, okay. My green dragon okay. jacket. Cool. <laughs> so much. Cool. Yeah, I knew a kid who was just like, yeah, I get all the video games early. When, when everyone was playing Twisted Metal 2, I already had Twisted Metal 3. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, dude, you don't have okay. to. I'm like, that doesn't sound true. Yeah. At all. Like, why? <laughs> like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Why are you lying to me? You don't have, we're friends. What are you doing? <laughs> Did I do something today that made you think I was mad? You have to yeah. come up with the story. <laughs> Anyway, like the, some of those people, I just want to grab them and be like, we like you just enough, just how you are. Yeah. You're, you're accepted and when you're loved just the way you are, buddy. You don't have yeah. to like, what the hell? So, yeah, yeah. The, the Kumase starts. We get a we get a fight that happens between characters we don't mm-hmm. know. And then we get uh, Ray gets in the ring. And for some reason, he antagonizes Chung Lee. It's not like he doesn't even know who he is because yeah. it's very he knows very well who he is. And I'm like, I would not have done that. What a dumb idea. I would not have done that. And then we get Frank beating up the Middle Eastern guy. Yeah. He wins. And then we get like the most insane fight montage with the monk. <laughs> he literally is running around like a monkey. And the pe- the people he's fighting are like, what? What? I don't, I don't know if that is like an 80s like casual racism thing or if that's an actual martial arts style. But I'm like, this does not. This is. This is very weird and out of place. Yeah. I'm like, I feel uncomfortable. I'm sure there are like crazy martial arts oh, things yeah. for people. Like, you know, there's like drunken fighting and mm-hmm. stuff. There's, I'm sure that was the idea. <laughs> Unfortunately, they <laughs> cast it a person that they probably should not have yeah. cast it for this particular role. But I mean, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> the 80s were a different time. I don't know. I wasn't, when I was watching it, I didn't think of a racist thing. I just thought of like, oh, that's a wacky way to fight. Uh-huh, that's <laughs> a weird, that seems like a very terrible, yeah. terrible fighting style. I don't, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm the definitive authority on this. I'm going to say it's not racist. It's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sometimes things aren't racist or problematic. Sometimes things can just be stupid. <laughs> Sometimes they're just accidental. <laughs> Sometimes they're just accidentally <laughs> stupid. But the whole time we hear, kumate. Kumate, Kumate. That song is awesome. They say the government has invested a lot Uh of time into him. Why is he so important? I just, I love, uh, I love Jackson. They, they come to take (laughs) Dukes, and he's like. I'm not your pal, dick face. I'm like, he is aggressive and like <laughs> to everyone. Again, he's a young up and comer. He yeah. wants to prove himself. Oh, I love his character so much. It's yeah, so and they're, they're waving those tasers around willy nilly. <laughs> they're just going to miss and hit tourists yeah. and like hit. I'm like, how, I can't remember how many volts they said, but like, that's 50, a lot 000. of volts. 50,000, which shit. I think could kill you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they chase him all over Hong Kong. And then he, like, gets them to go on a boat. He knocks them into the water. Oh, yeah. That bumbling cop routine is so funny. It's, like, out of, uh, 
Yeah. Like a Benny Hill show. Like, it's so ridiculous. Yeah. They could have used all this time invested in this storyline to, like, build up the romance uh-huh. or have more fights. Like, no, we need bumbling cops yeah. tripping. And whatnot. That's what we need. They're so ineffectual. And, like, they show up and, like, you got to come with us. And he's like, yeah. no. <laughs> uh, oh, darn, what are we going to do now? Come on. And he keeps telling them, like, guys, we'll be there in, like, two days. I'll what, go home. It's only you. two days. And they're like, no, what if you die, you idiot? <laughs> <laughs> we need you. <laughs> So yeah, he evades him while a slow rock song is playing. Yeah. <laughs> what what song was that one? Was that the Oh, um, I can't remember, but it's, it was it's like super Take 80s. the Night yeah. or something like that. I'm like, I feel like the song's inappropriate. Oh, I feel like back it doesn't happen as much now because m- soundtracks to movies aren't mm-hmm. really a thing anymore. Yeah. Or like in the eighties and nineties and like early two thousands, you could like sell a movie based off its soundtrack uh-huh. and the soundtrack would have made a ton of money. <laughs> But I bet that was like, you have to put these songs in the movie. It's like, where am I putting this? I'll put it in the bumbling cop yeah, area. Whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, Janice goes on a date. Because that was the agreement. She said, that I want to know agreement. about the Kumite. And he's like, we could do it if you go on a date with me. And I forgot to mention, after he asked her on the date, he does splits for like 10 minutes. Oh, he does, yeah. While Roy's like, what? You're splitting. Oh my Are God. you ready, buddy? <laughs> Come on, man. Quit doing splits. Ooh, that looks yeah. like it hurts. But they finally go on the date. <laughs> And she's just like, I want to be a reporter. Yeah. And he's like, I want to fight things. And she's like, also, I want to sleep with you. She goes right to bed with him. I'm like, well, oh, Janice, yeah. let's. <laughs> you light some candles for Janice. Yeah, she I'm is... like, I, I don't think up. you're supposed to sleep with the person. You're like, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know it's if they told you this ethical, in though. reporting school, <laughs> but I, don't, I think that's very unethical <laughs> what you're doing right now. <laughs> She's all about it. Later, she, but she she goes undercover and tries to get. Yeah, oh, no, yeah I got I got a note about that. I got a like, note about that. But yeah, then she's uh, well, she sees. She really uh, wants that story. Yeah, and she sees Van Dan's ass, Van Dam's ass, <laughs> Van Dat ass, sexy booty shot. Yeah, that is you don't get any glorious. That like they look like they spent three days trying to light that. Yeah, and like glistening him up. Like, huh? you Hello? know what? This is the only Hades movie I can think of where like they were not concerned with the female nudity. They didn't yeah. even care. Didn't even cross. They're she's like, nah. She wakes wearing up in bed. Clothes. It, like, yeah, she's she wearing up. Like, she doesn't. I, yeah, you're right. I think she's wearing clothes. Yeah. They don't even do the stupid. The, no. I hate the L sheet in movies. Oh. Like, no one does that. <laughs> Everyone I know either puts a shirt on afterwards or just lets them hang out. I've never seen anyone do like a <laughs> cover just. But anyway, uh, but they were like, we have to focus on just his ass. We need to focus on his <laughs> ass. <laughs> and he's literally like holding it first and then pulling yeah. it. <laughs> it reminds and me I, recently. I really want to know if he, if that was a choice he made. If yeah. Like, no, he looks so good. We got to do this. If he's like. Guys, did you you see me from behind? You yeah. really should. It reminds me of nice. um, recently I watched uh, Wild at Heart. Okay. And when Laura Dern is topless, she's putting her shirt on. I feel like they had a couple <laughs> extra thing. frames in the beginning of the scene where she's holding it up and then puts uh-huh. it down. I'm like, huh, I feel like she was holding that out. That didn't seem that didn't seem like an organic <laughs> movement. It seemed like she was like that and then went yeah. down. Um, what I'm saying is David Lynch was inspired by Bloodsport. He's like. I know what I'm going to do with my nude scene. They're going to hold their garment for a little bit. I don't know why I'm doing his Gordon Cole. <laughs> I don't know how to talk like David Lynch. Unless I know. That's when I do a David Lynch. I'm like, yeah, that's okay. I can only do his Gordon Cole yeah. impression. <laughs> or Egon. Anyway, I would love to see David Lynch directing Bloodsport. Oh, yeah. I would love to see him like when he was supposed to do Star Wars. Just any like throw him into anything. Weird yeah. Moonstruck. Just like weird <laughs> stuff. They like this would be amazing. Ray can't do the dim mock. No, he gives it the old college try. <laughs> <laughs> he like breaks it, and he's like, "No, no, that wasn't what I was doing. How about this?" <laughs> and he's like breaking his head over the thing. Uh, it's funny watching movies where people are like getting multiple head injuries. It's like mm-hmm. he like hits the skull. Like realistically, his forehead would be like red the rest of the yeah. movie and like swollen. <laughs> At least like a, a brush burn or something yeah, like that. Something like, like that. And I just brushes it right off. Like whatever. Yeah. Uh people in movies, they the same thing with wrestling. I remember JR talking about it on his podcast. He's like, it's kind of funny we were trying to trick people for decades. Like, you can't just watch a guy get punched in the head ten times and not swell or anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a surprise. No one caught on earlier. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know why he's trying to piss off the Black Dragon guys. He's already in the tournament. <laughs> I don't know. He is like, he's ridiculous. Yeah. But I love, uh, I love like him and all these other. The whole movie 
by themselves. Like Jean Claude Van Damme, at least at that time, wasn't wasn't the greatest actor. He was some would say charismatic. Some would say he never became a hey, great actor. Now, but he's gonna he's gonna be like Brendan Fraser and others. And next <laughs> year, you never know. He might get that Oscar. But uh, like all the weird characters together make this great soup of like yeah. Such a it's a fun awesome cast movie. of characters. It's so not the great. most, although it is based on a true story. Not the most realistic cast yeah. of characters, but they are fun. They Incredibly are very fun. Incredibly fun. Even for, like yeah. down to the the janitors wiping the mat and like all these weird little yeah. moments with characters. It's so so good. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They they kind of make you care about these characters, yeah. like, even though they're super cartoony and uh -huh. stupid and borderline stereotypical. <laughs> like even. Even like I'm the white American guy, like Harley <laughs> Davidson. Like yeah, even he's a stereotype. Yeah. A lot of times, like the white guy is the normal one, all the other ones are stereotypes. But not Bloodsport. No. Bloodsport's like we're going all in <laughs> on every stereotype. He's drinking beer like every I chance did feel he left gets. out. I did feel left out that there wasn't an Italian guy in there. That's okay. Uh, they need it. There's, there's that new wrestler that pretends to be an Italian chef and he oh has pizza dough God. in his wrestling match. I want him digitally insert it into Bloodsport. <laughs> I make it to pizza. That would be amazing. Yeah. I want to see that cut. The Italian <laughs> cut. Okay. Uh, Janice shows up. We're led to believe she slept with another guy to get yeah. the pass into the thing. I love it. She's like, I've been undercover before. It's like, oh, Jesus, lady. <laughs> How far undercover are you right yeah. now? <laughs> it's like, lady, it's the late 80s. I hope yeah. you're wearing protection. I don't think you should be going around. <laughs> there's there's stuff happening right now. I hope you're being safe. You really should not be jumping into bed with people. <laughs> so, yeah, she really enjoys the show at first. Yeah. So, this is when the music starts to drive me crazy. Okay. And I had to look it up to make sure it wasn't me. So, years back, I was watching this with an old girlfriend. How old was she? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help good, myself. That was a good one. That was the one time I've never, I've never walked into that joke before. That was really good. So next time, we're watching this, and she had a cat. There is a weird, and I, I remember when I looked it up, there's like a sitar chord that they're playing, uh, Okay. and it sounds like a cat meowing. Mm. Did you hear this? I think I did. Yeah, I was wearing headphones, so I was like... I was yeah. getting all of the Because I hear some people, and like, I guess it depends on your speaker. Some people are like, I didn't hear that. Mm. So throughout, th th from this point, throughout the to rest, the of, the rest movie, of the movie, yeah. you'll randomly hear during the music, you'll just hear. <laughs> <laughs> and like, we did it, like when we watched it the first time, we didn't know that's what it was. We're like. Where is the cat? Is the cat okay? There, there's a cat stuck under the mat. Just like. Yeah. And like we, uh, it was when she moved, she like bought a house and it was like her new house. Mm -hmm. So the cat was exploring. Yeah. So we're trying to watch this movie and we're hearing. And we're like, where's the cat? <laughs> Something's wrong with the cat. And we were like going throughout the house looking for this <laughs> oh, cat. Geez. And then we found her and she was like, fine. And we're like, okay, let's put the movie back on. And sure enough, like 10 minutes later. That's so funny. So I had to like look it up online. Yeah. I'm like, what is the cat sound? And someone said, I think it's like a sitar. It's some instrument. Mm. It's definitely on the soundtrack. Yeah. It's, but like other people were having issues too. They're like, I really thought my cat was going nuts. <laughs> uh, it dry I feel bad mentioning in the review because now people are going to listen for it. And it's oh, gonna, you can't hear it. Yeah, it's like going to ruin the movie it. forever. Yeah. You're always going to hear them. <laughs> so, yes, Frank goes up against the least imitating guy ever. <laughs> this is probably a guy who could kick my ass. <laughs> but when I was watching him, I'm like, you know, I might lose the fight. But going into the fight, I wouldn't be scared. Yeah, there's he, some doughy guys for sure. Th this guy was in shape. Well, yeah. But this one was like, oh. 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 And I'm like, oh, this guy's gonna get his ass. And yeah. sure enough, Frank <laughs> takes him out like yeah. right away. That's a there's a beautiful shot. He fucking kicks him right <laughs> off. And, oh. <laughs> Just annihilating. It's amazing. Him. Reminds me of uh, the, uh Troy with Brad Pitt. Oh, where there's yeah. that big guy he's supposed to fight, and he like takes him out mm -hmm. like in two seconds. <laughs> there's um, a there's a bunch of great there's a bunch of great fighters, and then like half the cast are interesting, but they're like very doughy mm. or very like, they're not muscular. They're not very, uh, mm. they don't seem very athletic. Well, I think this is when uh, new steroids were on the way. Cause if you look at wrestlers back in, <laughs> or even like bodybuilders, they're mm. not like super toned. They're like bulky. Like they're in shape. Yeah. 
But uh, before They're everyone like got the balls. good stuff, <laughs> yeah. like Arnold and them, they were ahead <laughs> of the game. With like, like, like Van Damme's clearly on something. Yeah. Everyone else is like, I'm big and bulky. <laughs> It is funny seeing how wrestlers go from the 80s to the 90s. That's crazy. <laughs> and then they get fat in the 90s because, <laughs> I don't know if you know, this Vince McMahon, when he got in trouble for steroids, his response uh, was to, like, push a bunch of fat guys. That's oh. why Yokozuna became a champion and hmm. uh, was Mabel, uh, who okay. became yeah. uh, Vader. Like, he was doing that to be like, look, they're not on steroids. Yeah. It's like, yeah, well, everyone else is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh, oh, good. Now they're just morbidly obese. I don't know. <laughs> Vince, I don't know if you're doing the right thing here. <laughs> But um, <laughs> sadly, Monkey Guy loses. I he really does. thought he was going to make it to the end. <laughs> With his like chest slapping, I really thought, man, this you is the one to do up, it. I, these are not main characters, <laughs> but him and Giant Guy. Uh-huh. That fight goes on for a while. It does. And because they're not main characters out of all, maybe the one fight in the beginning. That one fight in the beginning and this, again, because they're not main characters. Mm-hmm. I genuinely didn't know what the outcome would be. I'm like... <laughs> I think Monkey Man could actually take that. He doesn't, unfortunately. Yeah. But it was one of those. I'm like, wow, I don't know who's going to win. Yeah. I'm really invested in this match. Day two of Kumite has like really good fights. Yeah, like, it's it really, really does. fun. And, like that whole period of the movie is like, there's not too many stakes yet. Mm-hmm. It's just lots of light, fun, crazy kicking and, yeah. and spinning and nonsense and beautiful shots. <laughs> it's wild. Um, so Frank goes up and fights, <laughs> and he does. The Johnny Cage split groin mm, punch. Yeah. And I'm like, there it is. That's where it came from. <laughs> I mean, it would obviously per- be perfected in the Mortal course, Kombat film. Because yeah. it's way cooler when you do it to a guy with four arms who's half <laughs> dragon. And he's going. <laughs> oh. I love that Johnny Cage was inspired by Van Damme and Nicolas Cage, kind of. And then. Van Damme played a character in the opposing <laughs> film Street Fighter. Yeah. Which <laughs> like, is an amazing movie. One sure. of my favorites. I have a video on this channel about uh, Mortal Kombat, the movie. I love it. I love that movie. It makes no sense. Oh, the script makes no sense. <laughs> you never know. And I go into detail about how like almost everything in the film doesn't make sense. I will say it might not be a great adaptation of the game. No. But I feel like not. Street Fighter has a better <laughs> script. Oh, yeah. It's not built around street fighting, unfortunately, (laughs) but it has like a better story. Ridiculous and stupid, but it has a better story, I feel, than Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat, I feel, is executed better with Mm -hmm. visuals and the fighting and whatnot. It's like, I wish wish the writer from Street Fighter could have wrote the script for Mortal Kombat. But anyway, (laughs) Steven E. D'Souza. Yeah. From Dyer. Um, Yeah, Ray gets into his fight Mm -hmm. with Chung Li. I don't know why you would start shit with anybody at a fighting tournament. Overconfident. Oh. Hold on. Was was Rocky three out at this point? He didn't. Hold on. I need to see <laughs> if Rocky three was out at this point. Oh, Roy. <laughs> Roy, you should have watched Rocky three because that was the point of Rocky three. Mm-hmm. You know, you get overconfident. Yeah. Because Rocky, he was a celebrity. You got to learn the lessons that he Rocky was super learned. overconfident. Mm-hmm. He thought he could take on the world. And then Mr. T knocks him down. A but then Mr. T gets overconfident. And Roy, I guess, I guess after Rocky two, he was done. Yeah. He was like, yeah, I got it. I don't need a part three. I got it. And so, like, so he goes in there. He like, and he gets advice from Frank. Frank's like, Hey, yeah. Hit him in the stomach. He's, he's weak in the stomach. In stay the away stomach. from him. And he's like, I'm going to punch him in the head. And yeah. He's like, no, he said the stomach, you asshole. Do you not know anatomy? Stomach. Yeah. Stomach. Hit him in the stomach. And then he punches, like he knocks him down a little bit. And then he goes around and starts celebrating too early. It's like, no. And even Frank's like, what are you doing? Beat him up. And sure enough, he gets his ass kicked. He gets his head fucking crushed in. Yeah. This is like a, uh, almost like a Game of Thrones prequel. It's like, is this what inspired that, that episode? Come on. Oh, yeah. He like, he like, his head like hits the mat and blood splits out. Oh. Um, I mean, that's happened to me. Not, not a kick. <laughs> I once was really drunk okay. and face planted onto a twister mat Ooh. and blood squirt out of my nose. So I, I relate to the blood spurting out onto a mat, different circumstances leading up to those events. <laughs> That's not like a, it's not a phobia thing. It's not like the eye gouging. No, it's not. It only okay. happened once. And it yeah. was just like, oh, just don't be too drunk near a I twister. Don't, 
I don't know if any movie in history has had more blood spraying than this. <laughs> they even Friday the Thirteenth, the maybe entire Evil series, Evil Dead Two, maybe. Yeah, I feel or, like Evil Dead Two has or, uh, more blood Dead spray. Alive. Yeah. <laughs> But oh, it's, God, it's so was... great. So many slow mo. <laughs> <laughs> Chung Lee <laughs> destroys Ray. He is in the hospital yeah. now. They don't know if he's gonna pull through. They're like, he he might be fucked. He is out of it. Uh, but Frank and Janice fight, and she's worried he'll die. What does he say? Uh... <laughs> he's like, oh, stay out of this. Stay out of this. He's like, you want to be a reporter, right? He's like, yeah, you want to be the best reporter. <laughs> I want to be the best fighter, and you want to do it because of your dad. I want to do it because my... He's, like, trying to equate... <laughs> like, not just for me, but for... Sh <laughs> Shidoshi Tanaka. But, yeah, he, like... He's trying to equate wanting to... <laughs> wanting to get your ass kicked in a ring yeah. to reporting on people getting their ass kicked in a ring. I'm like, I feel like one's less dangerous than the other, personally. Um... <laughs> I love the I love the, like the super hard right turn to like drama where they're like screaming at each other. Yeah, <laughs> he can barely speak English in like yeah. normal scenes. Oh, that brick right there. Okay. Yeah. And then they're screaming. At each other. <laughs> <laughs> like this is so crazy. But this movie is so. You know what? She's wonderful. She can report. She can. She reports him to the government. <laughs> Freaking narc. She's narking him out. She's like, you got to shut down the Kumite. Who Frank did... Dukes is gonna die, and the military guy's like. That asshole the CIA keeps bothering like, Yeah, let's get him. I'm tired of them asking me <laughs> yeah. about him. Like, I don't know who she thought this would help. Like, this is ridiculous. It helped that guy. Yeah. Because earlier, we, we've been skipping over it. Earlier, he like, because they ask him about it, and he goes to meet the CIA guy. He's like, like Whatever. hey, he's at the hotel. Can you get him so you stop bothering me? <laughs> and now he's like, because before, I don't think he was going to shut down the Kumite. Yeah. He just says he was there. He's like, yes, let's get him out of here. Get him out of here. So yeah, well, uh, Frank is Frank is having his Rocky Four moment. He has seen the Rocky movies, the eighties uh, ballad bus ride montage yeah. thing. It's, it's so... not <laughs> it's not quite as good as the Apollo Creed death no. montage with uh, No Easy Way Out. Uh, but I do like that he looks <laughs> in the mirror and Chong Lee's looking back. <laughs> the, the eye acting again, <sighs> and then he looks over and Chong Lee's not there. Yeah. Speaking of wrestling, that reminds me <laughs> when the Ultimate Warrior came to WCW for that. <laughs> terrible storyline and even worse <laughs> match but the lead up Hulk Hogan sees the ultimate warrior in the mirror and it's like oh is he hallucinating it's like oh Hogan's hallucinating him but we can also see it and yeah. the camera can see it so is it really <laughs> oh. they got that from Bloodsport they're like we learned from Bloodsport yeah. well, that, it, and yeah. it, like has the nice rooftop split in the montage and all oh that dude stuff. that is like that is one of the oh nicest God. shots, the <laughs> coolest locations. I'm like, they just had some asshole splitting. I'm like, this yeah. is the nicest split that has ever been filmed in the history of cinema. I, I, it will never, <laughs> you will never get another beautiful shot of a guy splitting. Mm. <laughs> Nothing this fucking ridiculous should be this good. Yeah, this really. Is like riveting and interesting and dynamic, but <laughs> awful. Like so much, <laughs> aw like so many elements of it are so bad. I'm like. How is this so entertaining? It's amazing. <laughs> so Frank, he uh, goes to, you know, enter the Kumite again. Uh, but the government's got him. They're like, hey, you're not getting past us. You're going back to the CIA guys. And like, as he's walking down that hallway, random soldiers are popping. <laughs> out. <He's> like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a shooting game. They just really? pop out. It really, I almost waited <laughs> for like just a, a, a lady come out and be like, ah, and he almost like chops. <laughs> oh, like, oh okay. I would have lost points for that. <laughs> Lethal Enforcer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I found my copy of Lethal Enforcer, but I don't have a Sega CD anymore. Oh, I don't know how to play it. Damn. So, yeah, uh, the CIA <laughs> tries to taser him. <laughs> I shit you not. He oh. fucking Captain America. He grabs a trash can lid and deflects the taser <laughs> onto two other soldiers <laughs> and then takes the other taser. Wait a minute. Okay, so only one of the tasers fires. Yeah, one guy fires, and he deflects it. Onto two guys. Yeah, onto but two guys. But I think guys. the prongs need to be on both of you to shock you, right? I think so. I've never been tasered, but I, that's the understanding I have of tasers. You know, I i could be wrong. Maybe it does work. I, maybe I have an outdated knowledge of tasers. <laughs> Those are future tasers. Those are government tasers. <laughs> <laughs> all my knowledge of tasering comes from my favorite game of all time, Siphon Filter. <laughs> and all I know is if you taser too long, you will light on fire. Mm. And as long as the taser's still on, you won't fall to the ground. You'll just keep standing like, up going like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so he deflects them and he leaves and he enters the tournament. 
um, Frank and Chung Lee, they defeat their respective opponents. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, these guys are out. But Chung, he apparently did this the year before, which I feel like the referee and everyone should be less shocked. Yeah, they, He kills a guy just, to show how serious he is. He has like a bunch of finisher moves. Just like, yeah. 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 and you're like, okay, that's, I think he's almost dead. Yeah. You're like, oh, he's going to die. Like, you yeah. know, you're, what are you doing? He wants to kill him in just, the ring. And everyone's sitting there watching like, I, how, why, why? And then <laughs> everyone is respectful and they do like a little <laughs> prayer and he's like, ah. Yeah. And I'm like, does he get, do you get kicked out for that? I it feel should. like he's, I feel like but, he's like breaking uh -oh. some kind of rule. You're like, okay, yeah. you killed somebody last year. That was, okay, that's an accident. Clearly this is not an accident. Stop killing the other fighters. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Like we, the only I Ivan Drago number. killed one guy. Yeah. If they had been like, he killed like 17 of his opponents. Like, okay, well, not <laughs> wrestling that guy or fighting <laughs> that guy. But yeah, Chong is planning on cheating. Apparently. Which, are you allowed to do that? He doesn't get called out for he, so he has he powder that he doesn't. Gonna use. Yeah, and I'm like, is that against the rules? I don't, like, I'm like, it's is that? Yeah, I don't know. And again, this isn't wrestling where like if the referee doesn't see it, like like the officials are up Everyone's there, they'll see, see it. This giant cloud of of <laughs> of dust, like you have to see it. Um, it's okay, so crazy. So the ring turns into a ramp. I was wondering about that. Is I didn't that, get that either. It's cool looking. But I, I was thinking, like, did was there a scene that got cut where like, where like they break? body slammed yeah. it and it broke, or, or that's just like this is the final thing. Yeah, like I have the high ground. Yeah, I don't, it's literally <laughs> like a skateboard. Yeah, ramp. I don't know what happened there. Um, speaking of cheating, I don't know if you're allowed to use the ref as leverage to do your jumping. <laughs> that kick. was hilarious. I feel like that is frowned upon, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but they're beating the shit out of each other. Yeah, and then Frank is blinded. Again, the eye acting. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You've probably seen the gif of him being like, ah, I'm wondering why he looks like that. <laughs> it's because he's blind and he has no idea where to look. He's like, ah. Um, so, yeah, he's like trying to fight him and he's getting his ass kicked. But don't worry. He is able to overcome with the power of splits and roundhouse kicks. <laughs> I wrote down kicks. white man magic. <laughs> <laughs> this outrageous nonsense. I mean... The only thing that sells it is they keep sh like doing that shot, the yeah. blurred vision shot. Yeah. Like, okay, so he really can't see. So and it kind of sells it, but his acting, this blind acting, like. I don't remember anything from the training about him being blind. Do you? They, they blindfolded him okay. when he was doing the. He's like pouring tea or whatever. I'm like, I, and then I, I think, don't think he that's tried enough. to punch him in the. That's not I enough, though. I don't know if that's enough for this yeah, level. Not for this Jedi level <laughs> training. His midichlorians must be like <laughs> through the roof. Um, but yeah, I do like that he refuses to kill him mm -hmm. and he refuses to kick him out of the ring. He wants him to say, oh, Mate, yeah. we forgot. The only way to win is to by knockout, thrown out of the ring, or if the person says, Mate. Yeah. Uh, which I forget what Kumate means, but. I have no idea. Even though I fought in a Kumate <laughs> and died. Um, but uh, that's the thing. I went down fighting, man. I, I didn't get kicked out of the ring. I didn't submit. I just straight up died. They just killed you. And they just killed me. I got better. But anyway. <laughs> That whole that whole fight scene, I mean, the whole montage, everything is beautifully shot, beautifully edited. Um, that last one with them, there's so much slow motion. It reminds me of Flash Dance, <laughs> like the like beautiful slow motion dance scene and all this like weird and the music's going. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. I'm like, this is really well done, <laughs> but like really reminiscent of like Flash Dance for some reason. You know, I haven't seen Flashdance in a long time. I haven't either, but that's the, the but only thing I remember about there's it. There's a movie I like to promote <laughs> called Slashdance. Hell yeah. This came out last year. There's a beautiful new Blu-ray release. I love that cover. It's starring, I don't think these girls are in the movie, but the guy is. No. <laughs> uh, it's about um, starring wrestlers, female wrestlers. One of them died recently. Uh, but yeah, a girl's an undercover cop. And she has to join a dance studio uh, <laughs> because someone is killing people in this theater. And she has to figure out who the killer is. And it's called Slash Dance. And what's good about this Blu-ray, if you're wondering why I'm promoting it so much. One, you get a bonus movie, Hollywood's New Blood. Ooh, I did not know that. Yeah, it's got so many good features. Does it? Blu-ray, yes. Full -length Tell us all about them. Full-length commentary with director James Scheiman. 
Ooh. interview with producer Andrew Mazder, interview Ooh. with actor J. Buzz Von Ornstein, Ooh. and full-length commentary track with the Hack the Movies podcast. Whoa. Me and Johanna did a commentary track for Slashdance. Man, that sounds good. Great. It's a great movie. <laughs> it actually really is a good movie. Worth the price of admission just yeah. for the commentary alone. I want to do more commentary. If you're a DVD or Blu-ray distributor, hit me up. I want to do a commentary <laughs> on your Blu-ray. I'll pass the word around. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, Frank wins. He gets a sword. And then he celebrates with Ray. Just wonderful. He's like, we won, buddy. And he's like, all right. <laughs> he's already drinking a beer I'm in drinking the hospital. Beer. It's like, dude, you suffered a major. <laughs> Please don't. And, like, like, and by the way, alcohol like hurts your, like it, it, does, it fucks up your healing process. You might want to lay off the booze yeah. for a little bit. Um, but yeah, Frank goes home with the CIA boys. And like, he's a, he's a true romantic. He says bye to Janet or Janice by going <laughs> like this. From about a hundred yards away. She starts away. it, by the way. I though. know. Like you, you didn't want to run up there and like give him a little smooch or, or something. Anything. They, this movie was, this movie was not interested. The no. mo this movie needed to have a love interest. I'm pretty sure the love interest only exists so they could justify having a scene with him naked. I know. Yeah. yeah they, just, like if they, I bet you they were fighting for that shower scene to be early <laughs> on. They're like, no. And it's like, okay. Well, how can we? Make him naked yeah. in the 80s where we won't get accused of anything. Oh, what if he just had sex with a lady? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only way we could do it. Yeah. And then the movie, movie ends with a bunch of bullshit stats about Frank Dukes and I, all the things. I wrote him all down. Yeah. He retired well, yeah. after five world champion. He he retired as the world champion of Kumite for five years straight, never defeated. Oh my god. <laughs> fastest knockout was 3.2 seconds. Whew. Uh fastest punch with knockout 0. 0.12 seconds. <gasps> I'm like how what is that? A bell rings They're like you, there's no way. I'm like what does that mean? And then uh fastest kick and knockout 72 miles per hour. I'm like fastest punch is measured in seconds, fastest kick is miles, miles per hour. Miles per hour. <laughs> I was like I'm so confused. I am so confused by these stats. And then uh, consecutive knockouts in a single tournament, 56. I'm like, how many? This Kumite didn't even have 56 yeah, this Kumite people. had like eight people. Like, what the? F I guess it got bigger every year. I guess so. I guess, Maybe they by the end, it was like very popular. Yeah. Well, well, wait, is it Frank Dukes in the sequel? It is. Maybe those are the ones they're talking Maybe about. Did he knock it. a guy out in three seconds? I can't remember, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I wrote down, this man is either the greatest fighter in history or the boldest liar in martial arts history. He's the boldest liar. Yeah. I did hear a story. I forgot to look up the details, but apparently Frank Dukes and like Jean-Claude Van Damme had a fight on a rooftop. It would um, not surprise me. It would not surprise me, but uh, I forget who told the story. If it was Frank, I'm like, is this another lie? But I can totally see Jean-Claude being like, yeah, let's go up to the rooftop yeah. now. I'll take you think you out. you're a tough guy? Come on, do Come it. Come on. Do it. <laughs> Storting a bunch of coke, like, <laughs> come on, I'll fight you right now. Bison, <laughs> go home. <laughs> but yes, blood oh. sport, the greatest story that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, I don't know what else to say. It's a fun time. If you like Mortal Kombat, it's definitely a fun, like, pre precursor to Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter. Yes. It's, uh, it's very entertaining. And if you like <laughs> this movie, Check out the quest. Ooh. It's basically the same movie, <laughs> but it's a period piece oh. and has really nice cinematography. And I think, <laughs> I think, yes, yes. Uh, I guess if they did have a fight on Bloodsport, they made up because the script is written by Frank Dukes and Jean-Claude Van Damme <laughs> or the story oh, was written. The screenplay was written by other people. So, and directed by Jean-Claude Van Damme. Ooh. So they basically made the same movie again. Only they put Roger Moore in it. Uh, and they're <laughs> I like, have, I haven't seen that. I have to watch that. It's basically the that same sounds thing, ridiculous. just with more production value, bigger okay. actors. Uh, and again, they wrote it. <laughs> like, we'll just, you know that movie we were in? I'm just going to write it again. I'm just going to write it again. Uh, hey, you know that show I made, Mummy Cop? Uh -huh. I'm, I'm coming up with this new idea. Oh, yeah? This is, uh, yeah, it's called Cop Mummy. <laughs> it's about a... About a mummy who's a cop. Oh, interesting. But 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 it, but it's in the 1920s. Okay, yeah. that makes it original. It's original. It's, it's original, original now. It's original. You just now. change a, a couple things, then you yeah. have an original idea. You could sell it. Yes, like, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I'm really, tr I'm like breaking new ground. I'm trying new oh, things. Oh, of course. The yeah. mummy cop was fine, but cop mummy, that's where I'm really <laughs> That's where it's at. That's next level. That's next level <laughs> I've filmmaking. Really, really made a big time. Oh, yeah. Me. Ryan Hickey. Yes, sir. Where can we find you except for birthday parties unannounced? <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on the social medias at monster period FX. Yes, and you make some awesome things. We've I had your blob on the set forever. The blob has been here for forever. I have forever. it in a box somewhere. You also gave me the Necronomicon, which I want to put on the set, but I forget what box it's and in. And the stuff. You made the stuff. stuff. And I, I got this just for you. Oh, thank you so much. I... <laughs> This stuff is a fun movie. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, I really like the stuff. Uh, Larry Cohen classic. It's so good. I love it so much. I've never reviewed the stuff, but my good friend Mint Salad reviewed the mm. stuff. And then me and her reviewed Q the Wing Serpent. I love that movie too. Q I mean, I love Serpent. Larry Cohen. It's so crazy. Larry Cohen's great, but Q the Wing Serpent is like my favorite movie yeah. of his. And I love that he just kind of made it because he got fired. And he's like, oh, come up yeah. with this movie. Well, I love that in... Uh, if you haven't seen the movie, yeah, uh, there's a giant flying serpent around New York City. Is it New York City? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, he's in the Chrysler building. But he's yes. in the, there. The cops in the Chrysler building are just shooting blanks, like yeah. real guns with blanks, and I'm like, J -j 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 -j, and they put in a stop motion puppet later. Yeah. But they got police. Police were called because people were just being rained <laughs> down on with hot lead from these blanks. All the <laughs> shells flying out. Yeah. And he just did. He just like well, we can get up there. I got. I paid a guy. We can get access to the roof. And that was it. Like, he was a yeah. wild filmmaker. So if you want any of that stuff, check out a site. And uh, have you worked on any movies lately that are now on uh, physical release? Well, it's funny you should ask. The Barn Two. The Barn Two. The Barn Two. Oh, that is a. The Barn One was so good they made a second. Oh my God! That this is a beautiful. Directed by uh, Justin Seaman. Oh, we wow. just finished it for a uh, Halloween release. It's yes. great. Oh, can I can I read the back here? You can read the back all day long. Uh, it's been three years since Michelle Lexi drips. I said yep. right. Mm -hmm. Escape the events in Weary Falls. By the way, I think the bar one is still on barn barn. <laughs> I think the barn one is still on Tubi. It is. If you guys want to if you guys don't know what we're talking about. Uh, but she is still plagued with the question of what truly happened to Sam and Josh Mitchell Mussolino. And Will Stout. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. No, I'm not going to sneeze. Okay. <laughs> and the rest of her friends who disappeared on Halloween night. Now in college, Michelle and best friend Heather Sable Greedo. Did I say that right? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> Are put in charge of the annual Gamma Tai Psy haunted <laughs> house. Unfortunately for Michelle, some uninvited trick or treaters from her past come knocking. And this time. They brought their friends to the party, featuring monster mash of guest stars, including Linnea Quigley. Mm -hmm. I have her autograph over there. Yeah. Um, Ari Lehman, Jason Voorhees from the first Friday the 13th. Joe Bob Briggs and Diana Prince, a.k.a. Darcy the Mail Girl. Yeah. Joe Bob Briggs was on my show. Ooh. He made fun of me for knowing too much about the howling. That makes sense. But it was his fault because I learned about the howling <laughs> from, from his show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Lloyd Coffin, he was also on the show. <laughs> and Doug Bradley, Pinhead from Hellraiser. Oh, again, I have his autograph yeah. over there. Wow, this is a loaded uh, cast here. Um, if you like The Barn, The yes. Barn 2 is more fun, if you ask me. And Ooh. I think the special effects artist did a great job. It's me. It's me. I did it. Oh, you did it. I was a special effects supervisor. Oh, my God. But uh, we had a great time. It was over uh, quarantine. Yes. We had a great time making it. All the people, Doug Bradley was an amazing person to hang out with on he set. He seems like he'd be fun. He was so. I met him years ago at a convention, but I've never been the, able to work with him. The best moment of my life was he, I made a joke. I don't remember what the joke was, but he no. cracked up so hard, and I will never, never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> But we had a great time making it. It's so fun. Um, but it's available now on Blu-ray, DVD, and uh, tons of other fun merch coming out. And you know who else worked on this movie? Who else? Our good friend Joe from Movie Dumpster. Whoa! I can't believe it. So I I'm, can't I'm, believe it either. Is this my copy? Or? It is your copy. Oh, I you can't wait have to watch it. it. I was in suspense at the last yeah. barn. 
<laughs> I, I I kept telling Joe, I'm like, Joe, I need to. What really happened? When he was working on him, I'm like, yeah. can I see the footage? He's like, Tony, you got to wait. You got to wait. And I held him at gunpoint. <laughs> and I said, show me the ending of bar two right now. He's like, Tony, I'm such a professional. I, I would rather die. And I'd be like, I respect you, Joe. That's a true story that happened. <laughs> I believe you completely. When they make the when they make a movie based off the making of the barn two, that'll be the biggest It'll be moment in there. In there. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be the trailer moment. Yes. And then yeah. me and Joe went to Hong Kong and fought in the tournament. <laughs> Oh, and I forgot to mention the uh, the stuff, the beautiful stuff container was actually made by Joe Lascola. Oh! He did the art. It's just amazing. It the is. colors are gorgeous. Almost. Yeah, it's perfect. It's just perfect. He did an amazing job, and he's oh, a yeah, wonderful, there you go. wonderful friend. Layout by yeah. Joe Lascola. Uh, I love this. It's so great. And that's good. I'm glad we're working together yeah. on stuff now. You know, friends got to support friends. They do. They do. They do. And you all need to support this channel by subscribing, liking, sharing, and, you know, come on, throw us a couple bucks on Patreon or become a channel member. Try try out the $2 tier. We got a lot of good stuff on that $2 tier. I hear the $2 tier is a wonderful place to be. We have some, we do a bonus reviews for real schlocky stuff, which mean you have to come get together oh, yeah. again soon and do some yeah. like... Stuff that will <laughs> never get views on the main channel just because it's so ridiculous. I I did one recently called Ghost Boat, and it's one of the worst movies oh, I've ever God. seen. It's one of the worst movies. <laughs> There's sounds... multiple movies called Ghost Boat, but this one, it wasn't originally called Ghost Boat. Okay. They slapped the title on it yeah. to make it make you think of Ghost Ship. Uh, they, they tried to make you think of one another of shitty ghost movie, oh. but this was way worse. But the fun part about that is I had my friend Captain Boomies on. She's a real life yacht captain. Okay. So she pointed out everything wrong with the movie. So yeah, uh, <laughs> join the two dollar tier. If you like that, sign up for the five dollar. We got commentary Ooh. tracks. If you're spending two bucks, why not spend five bucks? And then look, if you're like a real hero, <laughs> a real American hero. Yes, ten dollars. You get exclusive live streams. You get exclusive wallpapers. <laughs> and in our live episodes, you get to call into the show. Ooh. You can be on the show. <laughs> All I'm you have to do, skip lunch one day. Just one day. <laughs> Make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I know you know how. Yeah. And then sign up for the $10 tier. Yes. It's that yes. easy. And while you're doing that, buy some stuff from Monster Effects. Yeah, it's. I promise it's it's reasonably yeah. priced. Don't buy your family Christmas gifts this year. Buy stuff or buy them stuff from Monster Effects. I, it, it is actually surprising how many people are like, oh my God, my anniversary is coming up. My husband's going to love this. This is so great. <laughs> like it happens you're like, all you're the like, time. Really? I'm like, the stuff? <laughs> can, can you make sure you deliver this by his birthday? And I'm like, I can send it to you in three days. <laughs> but yeah, check all that out uh, and support the show. This is my full-time gig, as I've said in many episodes recently, and I'm loving it. I'm loving <laughs> it so much. Uh, but yes, oh, new voicemail number in the description. I was wondering why I haven't gotten a voicemail um, since November. I forgot to renew the number. Uh, new voicemail number. Leave us a voicemail. All right, goodbye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.